what you, you know, what you do and how you got into it and why you continue to do it and everything else in between. Okay. Well, my name is Lisa Rosamino. I'm, I live local. And um, I have been feeding a raw, natural-based diet to my dogs for probably over 20 years. Um, generally, most of us start feeding raw out of necessity because we have sick dogs. Um, I was fortunate enough to kind of, uh, Wendy Volhart was one of the pioneers in the raw dog food epidemic, I guess. <clears throat> and so I started, I had a very sick dog that actually almost died from uh, par the parvo vaccine. She got parvo from the vaccine. And so she was very sick. Her immune system was always down. And I just started learning a little bit about canine nutrition and, and how to feed for, for the cells to be healthy. And I started doing it, and I, and I never turned back. I feel that it's curative to a lot of issues that dogs have. I think it's absolutely natural. It just makes sense. Um, so what it's kind of morphed into is, is me um, kind of educating and having the hunger to learn as, as much as I can about how to do it right. And it's morphed into me being able to share with a lot of other people who have grabbed onto it and, and had success as well. So. Cool. Anyway, so your dog was sick um, from the Parvo vaccine. Yep. And then how did, so how did raw, what, at what, um, I guess how long have you been feeding raw? Like from then to now? When did you start, I guess? How many years ago? I, I, I estimate it to be that I've been feeding raw about 20 years. Wow. That's a long yeah. time. So I'm 105. <laughs> <laughs> so 20 years of raw feeding and it all started off your dog becoming sick. Um, from the parvo vaccine, and so how did you transition from that that sickness into raw? What was what did somebody say that said, "Hey, go raw"? Well, it, it transitioned that I had um, after after her being really life or death, 50-50 chance of dying from parvo as a puppy, um, and she's very vaccinated, which was something I'll never do again. Um, we vaccinate way too much, but it, she was left as an itchy, itchy, inflamed dog. And I kept switching dog foods to kibble. I used to spend hours in these huge stores where you have a million um, choices. And I would try to read the labels, and they not, I didn't know how to read them, and they didn't make sense. Um, so I kept trying to switch until I finally, a friend of mine that was local that um, had uh, German Shepherds who fed raw, um, she, she just kind of told me about it. it just, I just started adding more, more whole food, more raw meat, generally, and living food. Um, table food, people food, which is so stupid because food is food. It's not mm -hmm. designated for a person or an animal. Right. You know? So I started doing that, and, um, and she never really thrived. I mean, it, it knocked her out pretty, pretty badly. On um, the... The parvo. Okay. Um, and all the suppressive drugs that she probably got after that. Mm -hmm. but, um, and she did die of bone cancer at an early age of 11. Mm -hmm. But subsequently, I just, I just realized <laughs> that all I really have control of is what I put in them and on them. And that is my responsibility. It's nobody else's. It's not the vets. It's not the breeders. It's, it's up to us. So Right. So, um, so you started basically after your dog got sick um, and a lot of it was uh, like inflamed skin mm -hmm. type of stuff. And then so you started searching around for dog food and nothing would work. Right? Yeah, I just kept switching and wanting better and you know, none of it, none of it did much. So then um, so then you started giving like what we, what we would tell people not to do now of like not table scraps necessarily but people food from that you, that you would eat. I say you know it's a, it's table food if it comes from the table. Right. If it doesn't come from the table, it's, it right. goes in their bowl and it's food. Right. You know, so put it in a ziploc. I said if you got kids and you've got leftover scrambled eggs, don't put it in the garbage disposal. You know, how can you not right. give it to your dog? Yep. So right now um, we have this in the United States specifically we have this. There's a lot of different, I guess, epidemics, if you will. So there's there's the training and understanding uh, relationship-based stuff with dogs, and then there's the um, the nutrition. I think even humans, we suffer from lack of education. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just like what I would see is lack of education, lack of understanding, and I think the human race is so quick to just take the easier route to say grab a burger, which I guess, you know, dealing with nutrition from what I understand, you could pretty much do anything in in certain quantities, right? right? So uh, self-control, much like 
alcohol. You know, if you have a beer, that's okay. If you have 30 in one night, that's not okay. Right. And so, same thing with dogs. And as the dog market continu continues to climb, as far as how much money they make, how big it becomes, because now we're in an era of millennials, or the millennial area of, of getting more dogs and having more children, or having more dogs first before children. Yep. Um, and so the market's growing, and so the big without mentioning tons of names, like the huge, let's say the Pepsis and the Coca-Colas of the dog industry, the ones that you can just rattle off your head or off the bat, are also growing and having more needs and desires. And so what I see is, is when you walk into, let's say, uh, PetSmart or Petco or even your local grocery store, and we'll start off kind of like here, mm -hmm. okay? So you walk into the grocery store and you're just a pet owner um, searching probably for food for yourself and your family, uh, and also to, you know, on the list was grab dog food or yeah. even cat food. Um, and when you're walking through the aisle, it's much like, it seems very glamorous, very Toys R Us-ish for yes, a child. Yeah. Uh, lots of blues, lots of red, lots of yellows, sparkle, um, pictures. Stuff floating around. Right. Fruits and vegetables floating around the right. table. So, <clears throat> I think since day one, we've been really tricked um, and not, you know, some will call it maliciously, some won't, um, because h how malicious is it if we don't know, right? So they can offer us all this crap, but if we take it, whose fault is it really? So I think it's both ends of the deal. And, but there's a lot of deception, which yeah. is not to blame us. We're, we're right. deceived. Because we don't know. Right. So and, when you, and it's a very secretive industry. So when you go into a store and you're looking at all these cool, funky, good-looking bags, and marketing has a lot to do with that, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, I want to talk about just the the idea of the first thing that people are going to ask to themselves right now about raw food as I'm going to start off with the basic pet owner like I don't know anything about raw food and I don't know a lot I just know it's better mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go into the more um, I guess the more skillful or the more um, the more um, what do I want to say? Nuts and bolts. Yes. Yeah, the more nuts and bolts of exactly more detail, more experienced handler or the more experienced uh, raw feed Er, mm -hmm. can also benefit from. So the first thing is, is first question that's going to pop into people's minds is, so why don't you have to cook it? And why is it going to be better for my dog than the stuff that we buy in stores off the bat? And you can go into as much detail as you want on that. But I think that's the first people are going to say, why don't you cook it? That's weird because we'll get sick from it. And um, why is it going to be initially immediately better for, for our dogs than the stuff we buy in the stores. Okay. Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> That's where we'll start. Um, and, that, and I hear it quite frequently. Yeah. What, when I tell people I feed raw, they go, really? Do you cook it? Which always cracks me up. No, yeah. I don't. It's, it's raw. Um, and, and what was the other question? Why do we... So, yeah. So, because that's the thing that like I think about, because mm -hmm. I'm a dog owner way before I was a professional. And so the, that's the first thing I heard uh, when, we, when I heard about it from Chris Dallas, yep. about like, do raw, I'm like, but isn't, aren't they going to get sick? Why can why can why is it so dangerous for us and not for them? I think that's the first immediate thing that people think about. So, okay. So, honestly, raw food is not dangerous for us as humans. Um, we do cook our food generally, but certainly those that eat fruits and vegetables raw, right, are going to get a, a lot a lot more nutrients because. Um, and here's the thing I tell anybody that's interested in raw feeding: the number one reason raw feeding is so curative and so life-giving is because raw food um, uh, that's not heated has what are called live enzymes. Live enzymes are the spark of life. They, mm -hmm. it's a, um, they cause every catalytic event in the body. So it's very similar to a spark plug in your car. If you have a spark plug, if you don't have a spark plug, your car's not going to run. It's not, and if it's a not a good, you know, if it's mm -hmm. a poor spark plug, it's not going to run well. So this so live enzymes are something that are, that's in food, and they cause all this, this events of digestion and other things, the way the body pulls nutrients and the way fats are formed and mm -hmm. vitamins are released. Um, when you heat food past, I believe it's like 118 degrees, you destroy live enzymes. So now you don't all have... Of them? Yeah. Wow. So, I didn't know that. So when you see kibble that's extruded, I mean, it's probably heated up to... 500 degrees because of how how toxic it really is and, and how um, pathogenic mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. ingredients are to it. So when you can preserve um, not heating your food, now 
is heated food past that that temperature still have healing properties, still have right. nutritional value? Right. Of course. It's still proteins, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, um, vitamins, minerals, that kind of thing. But it's just not that right. amazing, miraculous part of food, which is the live enzymes. And, and there's people that are treated with cancer with just enzyme therapy. Um, so, and the reason that we don't cook for our dogs, I mean, and we certainly can, and it's superior to dog food, but name me a predator on the planet that cooks its food. Right. They just don't. They're not designed for that. Right. So I, I want to um, intertwine before I forget. Um, so good point. And I think for me, again, because you're, you know, I am the audience right now in this process. So for me, um, when we talk about raw, we automatically assume meat. But we're not really. We're talking about um, broccoli that hasn't been steamed down, grinded down, and forced packed into yep. kibble, or carrots, or um, berries, and things like that. We're talking about when we talk about raw, we we are talking about food that hasn't been cooked Correct. or processed. We're talking about grabbing an apple off the tree and eating it. That would be raw consumption, and so that's that's good information I think for people to have because. Um, it's, it's similar to, well, we'll talk about maybe a vegan diet in the future, but um, when you have something that's not cooked or processed, and it could, it could be everything but meat, it's still raw. Right. Okay. Right. So, go, sorry, going back to the process of, and, and that was, and that's the perception that we have, right? When I said, well, raw food is bad, when you're like, well, no, it's not, because raw vegetables and fruit is actually really good for you. But now... Even where, even where meat is right. better for us. Right. Because now explain, and you can explain both human and dog side if you feel comfortable with it. Or and, and a lot of this is is also uh, transferable to cats, to felines oh, yeah. too. Okay, cats so you need, can cats need a raw diet more than dogs, in my opinion. Yep. So you can touch base on that too if you want. Um, but explain to me again um, why why is it that? And I know from experience one of the biggest things that stuck in my mind, and I can't remember. I think it was. Um, hanging out with one of my uh, old hunting buddies that um, would give his, like they, they would do rabbit hunting or hare hunting mm -hmm. and uh, they would get it and they would skin it and all that stuff and then he'd give the dog the, the, the good stuff, the vitals, the heart, the liver, etc. Yep. I'm like, isn't that going to make him sick? You know, of course that's just what you think because that's what we're told. Um, and, and he's like, no man, they, they have so many different things in their body that breaks these things down and I was like, and I was like 12 years old at the time. And so explain to me, because I think, again, now that we've separated the two of raw food doesn't have to be just meat, it could be fruits and vegetables, etc. It's going to be organ, it's going to be right. bone. Right. So how is it that an animal can eat something like a whole chicken without getting sick? And they can eat raw, all of this stuff. So why is it that they can do that? Because I think that that's what people assume. That's why they, don't, they have hesitations to do that. Well, I think what's happened is we've lost our perspective. I mean, uh, kibble, as we know it, which is a, which, which is bagged dog food that's that's extruded and heated and rendered and made into this porridge, mm -hmm. so that it can be baked and then made into cute little shapes. That we've we've lost our way, not believing that that's nutrition. It's it doesn't have if it does if food doesn't rot. It doesn't have life-giving properties. Wow! Yeah. Food, food should rot. Right. So How a Sour Patch could... Kid or a McDonald's French fry doesn't rot. I brought my. Hand you will. Yeah. We'll, we'll check <laughs> it out after, which so, I'm excited about. But, but yeah. That's what that's what you mean by that, right? Like yes. if you get junk that well, doesn't rot. If there's if it can't if a bac single cell bacteria doesn't want to eat it. Right. Should we? Right. So. Right. Um, so you know we want it should mold it should rot because it, because the enzymes in that food start to break that food down. Right. So a banana has enzymes available to it to break down the banana, not to donate for the to break down the steak, the right. eight ounce steak you're going to eat later, but for the for that banana food. The body expects food to enter the body that's got the enzymes necessary to break down that food on board. Mm -hmm. That's just the math. That um, yeah. So so when when we feed kibble. And the, uh, the other reason you're saying, how can the body digest that? Well, right. every species has a species-appropriate diet. Um, I, I'm never going to give my horse um, cod liver oil because he would never eat an animal. Right. Or have animal-based oils. Or like a things. cow. 
Yeah. But they wouldn't eat meat. Exactly. So, so you can't, so, uh, you know, you could offer them hemp seed or, or, or flax seed or some kind of plant-based thing, but the, the way they're designed is to be an herbivore. The way it's dog or, or canines are designed is to be a carnivore. Their jaw structure, their teeth, their digestion, everything indicates that they're to eat live uh, prey right. and that they have the ability to break it down very quickly. And when I tell people that, you know, if you... If, it, if everybody just had Thanksgiving and turkeys, and how many people took that turkey neck out and fed it to their dogs? Mm -hmm. Some did and some didn't. Mm -hmm. But in reality, the dog has the digest should have this digestive uh, stomach acids to be a pH of about two, which is very acidic. And if we've ever done that little cool um, Coca Cola thing where mm -hmm. you dissolve the nail or a bone because Coca Cola is so acidic, it's very similar. So. I ask people, why, why do you think the stomach in a healthy dog should be so acidic? And they, they usually say, well, it helps to break down the food. Yes, it does, but it also is disinfecting. Right. Things can't, the pathogenic stuff can't live in a vat of pH like that. And the beauty of a, a canine's digestive tract and feline is that food goes in and it goes out. It does not sit there and, fer and ferment and, and uh, proliferate bacteria like it does with kibble. Right. The digestion, I think, from in to out is about five hours with a uh, dog fed raw. It's about 15 hours with a kibble fed dog. You don't want wow. food sitting around that long. So there's an additional, did you, okay, so there's additional, a raw fed dog can process food from the time it eats it until the time it poops it in five hours, you said, normally? Approximately, yeah. Approximately, and then um, a dog that feeds processed kibble is 10 hours more. Yep, because the body has to struggle to break it down for one obvious reason, live enzymes, right? And also, it's so high in sugar, so high in carbohydrates, which dogs are not really designed to eat. I mean, right. there's a whole camp that doesn't really feed dogs vegetables, and there's some that do. I, I do feed vegetables. I don't think they're mandatory, but I sure think they're helpful because I think our soils are depleted. I think our dogs mm -hmm. are generally sick. I think... Um, Generation after generation of feeding weakened dogs yep. genetically. Yep. Anything we can give them that's, you know, those are going to be your phytonutrients. Anything we can give them that donates um, more minerals, more vitamins, vitamins. more amino acids, right. more enzymes is going to be good. So, um, so the, um, I like these little uh, facts that um, really make people think about you know, people who are listening to the podcast and not on the YouTube video. Um, what you said about Coca-Cola has the ability to break down bones and nails. Um, and that's, um, that's how you can kind of think of a, a dog's or a canine's or even a feline's mm -hmm. stomach to be, is they have the pH balance within their intestines and the stomach to break down bones. And like you said, it also has the ability to break down the bacteria that would normally cause humans all these... Oh, sorry. All these different issues. And so that's... That's huge. I mean, that's that's actually pretty important. So, I mean, we just had a recall on um, romaine lettuce for salmonella. So, it, you know, everybody's all freaked out about raw food being like this filthy uh, process, but it's really not. We, we freeze almost everything, um, which will diminish some of the vitamins and minerals a little bit, but it's not, it's not going to, it's going to keep the integrity of the food, and that's just kind of how we have to do it, because we're going to stockpile the food generally, but... Um, you know, we still can get some live enzyme activity from food that's frozen because it's not heated. Um, so, so the heat is what kills it, right? And then, just to go back to what I asked originally to the people that are like still like to to I guess go back to it is dogs have different intestines and stomachs and the ability to break down raw food and bones and all those things, so they could eat a whole raw chicken or a whole raw duck. Yep. With absolute no problem. Right. Right. And so. actually, that is the perfect meal. Right. Because you get the guts, the glands, um, all the icky parts, yeah. that, what we call all that. And, the, and really, the organs are nature's super vitamin. They're yep. the mega vitamin. That's For us, too. Yes. Right. And we're all probably deficient because we just yep. don't do it anymore. It's really so, ethically, ethnically. So good. when we talk about kibble... Um, I want to I want to move to that because that's whatever. If you don't feed raw, you probably feed kibble, right? So, right. Um, are there when you go to the grocery store or you go to your pet food place? Um, are there is there 
a good kibble, like if, if people can't do raw for whatever reason, is there, is there a good kibble and what, what do you look for when you do want to decide, okay, I'm not going to do raw, but I'm also not going to do Alpo right. or, or a Walmart-based brand. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are some things to look for in kibble if, if you have to do it, if you're forced to do it? I would say you want, you want to look for minim, minimal ingredients. Basically, you know, the less Classic that they have to add, I mean, when you have to add, when you have two lines of food items in a bag, on a bag of kibble, and six inches of synthetic vitamins to make it even worthy to be called food, mm -hmm. that, that's a red flag. So you, you really want to have, um, I think generally within the first five ingredients, there should be two or three protein sources, and within the first three, there should be two, so probably three for the five. But when you say you, protein, you mean like, chicken, and beef, and not not byproduct product. meal. Right. That could, yeah. Okay. And so it's gonna it, kibble will be expensive in that scenario. Um, and and in my experience, it seems like a good bag of kibble that is decent enough to keep your dog somewhat healthy mm -hmm. is pretty much the same price as if you were to feed a, a great diet like raw. Yes. Right? It's pretty much the same price. A good bag of shockingly, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you can always make kibble better. So right. anybody that feed, does feed kibble, um, then we could actually do that as another thing where we figure out how, to, how do we read a bag of dog food because oh, that's me, huge. it's it's, mis, it's mysterious. Um, they they do not show you the amount of carbohydrates in a bag of dog food because they don't have to because dogs don't require carbohydrates. They're and is it is it regulated differently than like is is it under the USDA? It's AFCO. Um, uh, which is the, the governing body. It's, um, and there might be some of that as well as some of the food. Um, so it's regulated by, by who? The government? Um, and does it I have this? Africa, I'm, I'm not sure that answer, but it's. Does it's, it have the same regulations as like humans would as far as. No. Okay. Because I know, like, I don't know, probably in the last 10 years, maybe less, when you go to like, uh, a ra especially fast food, I don't know if they do it in like real restaurants that cook real food, um, but I know like even Chipotle, uh, McDonald's, whatever, uh, and I love Chipotle by the way, but uh, it's one of those things that they tell you exactly how many calories. I went, when I was on a trip last week, I went, uh, I stopped at one of those big gas stations like mm -hmm. the Loves or the Flying J, and they had <laughs> Cinnabon in there, and they had to put the calories next to the thing, and it was like the amount of calories that you should have within like a day and a, a half day, yeah. and like one little Cinnabon thing. So now, anyway, my point is, is humans are, are companies are legally, um, I guess, forced to, to put the calories in how, how many, how many calories you're going to intake. And with dog food, it's not really the case. Well, I think they, they do, or you can find out, um, like there's, I think it's called meta, metabolic metabolic energy. Mm -hmm. There's there or the calorie density and that kind of thing. You, you can find that stuff out in um, kibble, but mostly people want to know is it is it um, complete and balanced? Which AFCO, which is the governing body for dog food, mm -hmm. um, discloses that stuff. Um, but the question is, does the body understand synthetic vitamins? Does it? What are the sources of of these? Um, Mostly the grains are they are they full of mold? Yes, they usually are. It's the waste on the floor of the meals. Really? Um, what percentages are there? Is it a is it a food that's causing inflammation? Generally, it does. Mm -hmm. how many, how, what's converting to sugar? And I mean, the cats are, t are a perfect example. That cat kibble and cat food is so high in carbohydrates, and cats have no need for carbohydrates. Like it, it's detrimental to them. So high, they still have to cats still have to get the um, required amount of protein to survive. So generally, they eat double the amount of food mm. to get the amount of protein they need. So they're getting double the calories, but they're getting so much sugar in the form of grains that, that they're not. And that's why almost all cats that are kibble fed generally succumb to renal failure, kidney mm. failure. And they, yeah, that's and also, a huge, huge killer. Yes, it's it's, huge. And, and the other thing too is. Cats don't have a strong thirst mechanism, so here they are eating this dry food, and they're not going to drink a lot, and so they're very dehydrated as well, and mm -hmm. that's you know that of course affects the kidneys, so they're like chronically dehydrated. So it's like because I know cats are desert creatures, and exactly. um, so it's like basically eating two bags of Doritos and being like 20 minutes later you're full or you're you're, you're hungry again, and mm -hmm. then it's like 
you're thirsty, so you chug a you chug a thing of soda, and yep. then you're thirsty again, and so it's and just none of fillers. It satisfies, yeah. And none of this satisfies the body because when you're thirsty, it's not it's it's your body telling you like, hey, I'm thirsty, and it's your and it's your stomach that and your brain that tells you like, hey, you need something, and then. What happens is the mass production, um, you know, and everybody eats snacks and whatever, and it's, it's all about, uh, I think it's, it's really about discipline and knowing what's going into your bodies, not only for our dogs and cats, but for us as well. But dogs, I think it's, I think that, you know, making this video and this podcast is so important because so many people are, I think, t I, I'm really grateful for the knowledge and information that's coming out now about human, um, human uh, health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. I think it's way, way, way more surfaced than five to six to seven years ago, where it was fast foods were rolling, and now you're seeing more salad bars and right. smoothie bars and avocado, and, and which is really, really good. And it's definitely moving west from California over to the East Coast. But anyway, but the dogs are kind of stuck back where we were back in like the late 80s, early 90s of, wait, there's more. And the stuff that we're consuming by the masses is bad for you, and so, Let's let's talk about what actually goes into dog food. And I know you told me a, a statistic about I forgot what it was. Either sugar or something that basically anything past mm -hmm. this certain ingredient is is so they, when they say there's chicken in the in the in the product, and you were telling me about well, they can break up the chicken, they, right? So they can use um, let's see what's an example. If they say chicken byproduct meal. And or, no, they do that with grains a lot. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so, so when you look at a bag of dog food, there's a descending order. Right. Of, so you can go quantity. home and flip your dog food over right now. Right. And what do you what do you? Look well, you want you want a couple of proteins that aren't byproduct meal proteins. Like so not cornmeal, or I mean uh, chicken meal. What would it be? Chicken byproduct meal. It can be called okay. or chicken byproducts. You want you want proteins to be the beginning, but they're also the most expensive, and they and they also have the most moisture density. Mm -hmm. But then they'll add rice, uh, brown, it might be brown rice, white rice, rice middling. So now, but they can separate them all. But now maybe rice is top heavy in that diet mm -hmm. because the meat, because of the way they've separated right. the ingredients. Because you, because I was, they've listed it. yes, because I was told like flip your bag over mm -hmm. and see what the first two to three ingredients are. And so when that happens, um, what is the what is the what is that statistic that you were telling? Not statistic, is it about but the, the fact, salt. Yeah, like right after the salt means everything else is basically about one percent. Right. Yeah. So, so on a bag of dog bit. food, you've got your ingredients listed. Yeah. Salt is is a necessity for human life, so mm -hmm. they they add salt to the diet, mm -hmm. which is so important. Once you see the word salt, anything from that point down is I think salt is whatever this, it is uh, the percentages, mm -hmm. but below that is like 1% of, of right. what's in it. So say you've got a, a diet with um, cranberries or blueberries or something covered. Well, if you look at salt and that ingredient is listed, it's, they could have one blueberry. And, right. And still, and and you can still advertise it. As same well. thing with like chicken and stuff. Like if it says yep. chicken and steak and even like the, even some of the, um, the wild game stuff mm -hmm. like the boar mm -hmm. and stuff. So anything past salt, Typically, in the ingredients base, is one. It could be one percent of that, and they can legally still be say one blueberry. One it's blueberry out the of the great salt divide. The great salt divide. All right, I like that. <laughs> so, okay, that and that's pretty deceiving for for people. Um, but the biggest thing people don't understand is how much sugar is in a bag of dog food. Okay. And that and that that's not given. That's not disclosed because they don't have to. Like I said, so if people can do a simple equation of take the number 100, subtract protein from it, the fat, and these are all listed on the, the label, uh -huh. the percentage of protein, the percentage of fat, the percentage of ash, and the percentage of moisture. Now, you may not find ash in moisture, but we'll assume that ash is 7% and moisture is 10. Uh -huh. um, or we, and then the numbers might be slightly different, but that's generally it. So when you add those all up and you subtract that from 100, generally you're going to get in a bag of kibble about... 43 to 50% is going to be left over that's carbohydrates that they do not disclose. Now, carbs are sugars and starches. And so what is it? What, it? what would it be in dog food? Junk? It's like, going to be sugar. Just sugar. And, and so our dogs are eating, the sugar is very inflammatory. So we wonder why they're itchy, why right. they're arthritic, why they can't think, why they're hyperactive, why they're, 
why they have behaviors. Anxiety, stress. All that. Yeah, because you're I mean, being when you put a kid, you give a kid a yoo and chocolate yeah. milk and a Pop-Tart for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. By, by the third period, they can't think. Right. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And, and that, that's, that's huge because people just don't, they, and again, going into working with dogs professionally, I see it. I see people wanting to do so much more for their dogs. And, and, and the way that we do it is very relationship-based, mm -hmm. which is different. We're like, stop the training, know your dog. Like, the training's not going to help right now. You don't even know your dog. And it's interesting because they care so much to the point of, you know, spending a ton of money or giving up or moving or whatever. But a lot of it, or some of it, could definitely come just straight from the diet. So you can have a lot of behavioral issues from, like Lisa was saying, is... is if you feed your dog all that junk in the morning. So it's basically like waking up, and again, through different discipline and, and, and increments and things like that. If you have fast food every now and then, not gonna kill you. But if you eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, forever, which a lot of dogs it's gonna do. It's going to alter your brain chemistry. It's going to change your brain chemistry, and it's also going to change the way you, you could be arthritic, which can make you grumpy. Um, so it, not, it, it could also like psychologically do issues to you, but you can also, it causes pain, which then can mm -hmm. cause vulnerability, which is, could be aggression on the leash. It causes leash. degeneration, it causes right. aging. Fast cancer, and, you know, cancers. And we love to train our dogs. It's, it's probably a hobby for a lot of, it's a necessity initially, but then yeah. it becomes a hobby. But when, right. you have, when you're working with a dog that just, just doesn't have mm -hmm. what it takes to, to be a good learner, and then what do we do? Get punitive? Do we right. do we reward more? What do we you know? And then when you realize that they can't think straight, we, I mean we see that in humans. Why it doesn't that translate to dogs? Absolutely, yeah. And I think that you know that's why it's important that we do this is because people just don't know. So when we talk about there's a couple different brands like let's just say Blue Buffalo, Arcana, um, some of the bigger brands that are are decent food, um, comparable to some of the I guess really crappier big corporate brands. Um, when you, I, I know we discussed it a little bit, but I want to, some people at home, they're looking at their bags of food right now and they're going, holy crap, what, what do you, what do you like to see? Like you said, I know you said single, try to do like single ingredient stuff. So having a minimal of like what, 10 ingredients, what, I mean, what would be, what it, would be decent? Um, yeah, I mean, anything that's less than, anything that's less than this. Okay. Yeah. So that's, you know what I mean? Okay, let me see. I can't even, so that's probably so ground yellow. So in this this bag um, from Purina, uh, there's ground yellow corn, comma chicken byproduct meal, which basically means this is a bag of sugar and cornmeal. Do you want to know how much sugar's in that bag? I do. Um, and then everything else after that I can't pronounce. Okay, five pound bag of Beneful is going to be forty three percent sugar, which is two point one pounds. That's that's how much. This how much? This is what will be out of this bag. This is what will be converted to sugar. Really? So this is so that's almost that's probably half the bag. Mm -hmm. So this it's is a about. five pound bag, four pound bag, and then so if this was a little bit bigger, that's how much sugar would be in yeah. the. And then for those of you who are listening to the podcast. Um, what is this, a, a quart, or what is uh, this bag? That's a gallon. Ziploc okay, yeah, Ziploc. so this is a gallon Ziploc bag, and over a quarter of it is full of sugar. And so that's a five-pound bag of the leading um, big corporate Beneful uh, Purina type stuff. It's beautifully packaged, really. Yes, I sweet, mean, look at peas, look at this floating around. Now, you know, find me the pea, find me the carrot, right. find me this whatever herb this is. You're going to have a lot of this. Yes. And the thing about marketing. dog food is, is grain is cheap. And it also is required to make this food stick. And it's and, and there's so much grain that's um, moldy and discarded. It all goes into rendering. It all goes into dog food. So it just packs it in. Just packs just it in. Just a bunch of crap. It's a usable because we waste nothing in the food industry. Nothing right. is wasted. But for those of us, and you might be included a little bit, we've only known to feed dogs out of a bag of dog food. We, mm -hmm. we are not, I mean, that's why if you can get an old seasoned vet that used to do house calls or a doctor, they, they knew that dogs on the farm were fed. They, they got a placenta once in a while. They, they hunted, you know, they ate mice. Mice, rabbits. They, they, they ate a natural predatory diet. Yeah. But then what happened was when the horse and carriage and we started to moving towards cars, all this grain was available. We didn't, you know, there weren't as many horses being used. So the surplus that in the Hence Purina, which is a grain company, yeah. um, 
they would start, they started to convert it to be used. Well, actually, before that, they started to can meat. And that was Purina used for, did? Um, I don't think it was Purina. Oh, okay. But um, canned meat would be used for dogs as a supplement. Um, but we, you know, we, for millions of years, we've never fed dogs kibble. It's only up until this right. generation. And, and look at the damage it's done. Right. So similar to our use of, vet, of uh, antibiotics. Yes. Yes, which we'll talk about. And I want to just discuss really quick, um, this is a big marketing scheme, in my opinion. Um, you get all these nice beautiful marbleized cuts of uh, beef, looks like. Um, you get carrots, you get you get uh, green beans, you get grain. Um, and the majority of this bag is sugar. And basically, like, if you were to think about it, it would be like going out to buy, like, a jiffy uh, package for, for cornbread, right, together. And then the dogs have, we're, I want to talk about this in a minute a lot more, but they have really loose stool, they'll have diarrhea, uh, and it's a lot, so basically everything that they ate will also, everything will come out, which we'll talk about. Um, and so it looks like just a big marketing thing. So it looks like these they, cups... Just to interrupt you, yep. they, they have to add things like beet pulp and cellulose. And cellulose is, is sawdust. It's a, sawdust. It's a plant, plant cell. Um, they have to add that, I believe, because our dogs would be so chronically, would have such chronic diarrhea. They do that to bulk up the stool and to hold moisture. Because right. I, I think any time you see a dog that's been kibble fed, you pick up a lot of stuff in the yard. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start to feed them raw, the biggest thing people say to me is, oh my God, yeah. I, I picked up this much, now it's this much, yeah. I can't smell it and I can't find it. Yeah, and that's... so you go, well, guess what? The food's yeah. being utilized by the body by this I mean, yeah. what, where's their nutrition if it's all coming out bigger than it went in? Right, exactly. And, and, and you know, we'll go there right now. So that, well, that was one thing that, um, that was like a deal breaker for me. And again, and I'm somebody who's been working professionally with dogs for 10 years and um, I love dogs and I want to do my research and it is a bit overwhelming. And I get that and I understand that and I respect that because you don't want to do it wrong. Just like when we sell like a dog training tool, like an e-collar or even, right. even a harness. If you don't know what you're doing with it, you could mess it up, but um, ultimately, if you're just guided a little bit into just do these three things and it's going to be a hundred times better than what you're doing. And so one of the things that personally for me, I'm like, man, this is overwhelming. I don't want to do it wrong. And then when Lisa came around, I don't know, I've met you a long time ago, very long time ago, um, probably six, seven years now. And uh, the ability to, what you do is you make it very accessible to people who don't really know what to do and it's overwhelming, um, which we'll talk about like some everyday stuff that they can get together and start feeding and how to transition and stuff like that. But one of the things that won me over huge was the stool. So the poop that the, my dogs would take um, on, on kibble, which they've been off for two or three years now completely, is, uh, you know, like we were saying, everything that comes in comes out. Like huge, huge piles of stool, like like cow and horse poop, and it's like now a little gopher mine. Right, you know, and and now they'll basically poop out like just little bone shards of like little compact, you know, protein. I don't know. Like it's like scat. Yes, like it's if scat you, if exactly. You are like in the a wolf. woods, and you see right, you see it in the path of a, a coyote or wolf or a, exactly. a fox. It's and it's exactly got little berries it in it, and it's all seasonal. Like, yes. So what, when I when people say, well, how do we know what a dog should eat? Well, we mimic the, the wolf. But I tell people, we don't really know what they eat. They eat seasonally. They eat variety. They eat their opportunists. Right. And they, 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 take they get what they can get yeah. when they can get it. But at the same time, what does a wolf eat in the Adirondacks? I'm sure they eat differently than mm -hmm. the wolf in, in Alaska. Absolutely. So there's got to, and then, then you look at the pecking order of the pack. I'm sure Who the, eats what the alpha female gets what she wants, and right. the underlings chew on a bone for three days. Exactly. And they and they'll go back to a three day old carcass. So it's full of bacteria, and they exactly. eat it, and they don't get sick. Exactly, and because right, and so that's something I wanted to mention that I I forgot. I'm glad I did. Um, it's the same thing with dog training. I find what we have created is an ideology. Um, I see tribalism in the dog world, mm -hmm. where it's. One way or the highway. This is how. This is what I believe. And a lot of times, they don't believe. They don't look out for their dog. They look out for themselves. It's an ego issue. It's an ego issue. It's selfish. Um, like a person will say, "I don't want to." And we're not talking about physical pain or corrections or anything like that. I don't want to reprimand or correct or, or teach. A correction is just like if you spell a word wrong, 
Yeah. You underline it and say, this is how you do it. So next time you spell it right. And people are so against, not my client base, but there are people out there that believe in completely just ignoring bad behavior. Like if we were to do that to kids, what world we'd live in. Yeah. Yep. And, and so it becomes an ideology almost. Um, yeah. And so you get into marketing. So you get this beautiful bag and you're shopping and you have more important things to do, like feed your children, feed your significant other, feed yourself. And so I think the important thing for people to understand out there is it's not that expensive to go raw. Um, and it's also more beneficial to know even if you're not going to go raw, you can do better than what you're doing. And you don't, you don't want to go any – I always tell people any – well, actually, things are changing now. But if you can grab a bag of dog food in a gas station, it's probably not the best thing in dog food. But things are changing now, or you know, things are getting better, which is good. But anyway, um, it comes down to ideology, and I, I'm, I'll never forget this. When I was, I did a five-year contract with wolves in Colorado, which gave me the opportunity to study canines. I didn't train them; they're wolves. Um, I watched them. I studied them. Uh, I studied their behavior, how they, how they were, how they took humans, um, because they're basically like in, insanely skittish feral dogs mm -hmm. like the, the dogs that we come in that are beaten that are um, neglected abandoned or abused the dogs that I typically will work with um, because that's my specialty and that's that's not really my specialty by choice it's what I'm able to do and it's what I love to do mm -hmm. I, I never was taught how to do any of that stuff it was just like oh do this instead of that and then boom which is great but my point is this is when I was there um, the people that would come and visit the wolves because they were in enclosures because they were born in captivity, which means they can't really be released. So they have five acre pens, which is not enough for a wolf, but it's better than a cage. And so I remember one time um, a, a baby bird's nest was on top of one of the gutters and it, two of the baby birds fell out. And usually at the wolf sanctuary that I was working with, it was a lot of biology majors, um, veterinarians. And so no big deal for us. That's life. It's nature. It happens. So, but all these people were around, all these probably dog lovers and dog owners. And I think there's a big difference between somebody who really understands a dog and understands what things that they need naturally and primitively, and the difference between somebody who just says, I just want to love my dog and pack them full of crap and whatever until they die of probably cancer. And so anyway, they were around kind of watching, oh, the baby bird. Yeah, it's sad, but what are you going to do? You know? So anyway... We threw the birds, the chicks, over the, the fence to the wolves because that's what wolves are. And everyone was in shock. Couldn't believe it. They were like... supposed to save it and have a fail right, or something. Right. Well, not only that, but when the wolf actually... Because all of us that were volunteers there actually were taking bets of like which wolf was going to eat the baby bird first. Right. And everyone around was appalled. And they were like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? And we're... And, the, the, the bird was dead. I mean, it was like a naked, it didn't have feathers or anything, right? Just a little baby, basically. A little hatchling. Yeah, a little hatchling. And, and so a wolf came up really timidly and just looked at the humans and just grabbed both birds and just sucked them down. And people were like shocked. And, and that's where I'm, I'm kind of going back to the ideology of the dog industry now. It, it's getting so far away from primitive instincts. And we have so much fake stuff going on out there, just a bunch of bullshit of people thinking and saying the natural way. If they actually knew what a, if, if they knew natural dog training, they would call me a saint. You know, if I put a little pressure on a dog for not sitting with a prong collar or a slip collar or even a harness or a halty, other dogs will just kill them. Right. In the, in the world, they'll just kill each other. And then a whole different deal. That's it. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyway, same thing with, with um, the market of purina. a, bigger brands saying, okay, here's this little pocket, and by little, I mean huge pocket of pet people who are very... Multi-gazillion dollar industry. Right. Street. And they're very uneducated. So let's paint them a picture of all this beautiful stuff on this bag. So anyway, my point is, is um, I think dog owners should do what you're saying and kind of go back to um, what they should naturally be eating. Well, I've never had... So I've had lots and lots of people come to me and they literally, if they've been sent to me by um, a vet, mm -hmm. sometimes the, the vet has said, listen, I can't help you heal this dog until the dog gets nutri better nutrition, right. which just makes sense. Otherwise, it's like changing the oil on a car that has yes. a crappy engine right. or whatever. Yeah. So they'll come to me, and they're overwhelmed already with maybe Chinese medicine, maybe herbs, maybe um, different modalities that they haven't seen. But they come to me, and they're like, I have to change the diet but I'm clueless. They literally look right. like a deer in the headlights. I tell them to just take a breath, 
Right. It is a horrible. If you can feed your children, you can feed a dog. Right. And I say, do you measure out 16 grams of carbohydrates and four grams of protein on your? No, you eat color, you eat variety, you eat nutrient density. That's how we should eat. And I, I even remember hearing somebody say, um, we should eat like our grandparents ate. If you can't hunt it, pick it, grow it, fish it, don't eat it. Right. And, re and so right. basically that dumps exactly. it down. So um, we, what we've, we've been sold such a lie, something that started out as a byproduct. Um, this this um, Sprats cakes were started in England that were like a, a, a grain cake that was a discard of the industry, and that's they started feeding dogs that. So that's sort of how it started, mm -hmm. if you look at the history of it. But this, this industry is so deceptive and so damaging and so expensive. You know, I tell people you're going to pay the grocer or you're going to pay the vet or the doctor. So food absolutely is medicine. Food is curative. Um, and, and, you know, the one flaw in dogs that we all know is that they don't live long enough. And so... You know, the biggest thing we want to do is have them live for health and longevity. Mm -hmm. um, I've been fortunate. I, we put our lab down at 16 and our shepherd down at 15. They probably could have gone f longer, but, you know, their body started breaking down. I have a 32-year-old Arabian horse. Wow. Um, and my, all my cats have lived to be in their 18 to 20. Um, and it still doesn't feel like enough. Exactly. You know, I tell people our, that all the time. Yeah. We're just, so, it's just how it is. It's selfish. It's, but it's but even with that, you know, we want longevity and quality of life. And, and there's a price to pay, and the price is learn a little bit. And I don't think you're transferring that much difference in funds between kibble and a raw diet. Yeah. Or if you want to feed kibble, there's lots of ways to make it better. Feed a raw egg. Get farm, get farm pasture-raised eggs. But that's what we should be eating. Right. The omega, the omega um, fats are so much better in that. Mm -hmm. um, everything's better in it. Um, feed some vegetables. Throw in it. Throw in some coconut oil. Um, use bone broth. Um, there's all kinds of wonderful herbs. Throw in parsley. Mm -hmm. Stuff from your garden. So many people um, will tell me, "Oh well, we do that," and they act like it's almost like a secret, like they're cheating on the dog food kibble or right. something. Right. But um, when once people start to learn that you can, you can do this, and, and, and I tell them, you know what, there's, there's some kind of um, pay, pay check too for the dog owner, because when we start to feed raw, and we see that dog so excited, right. and we see the changes in their coat, the stool is like so small, behavior. The, the smell, the behavior, the, everything about, it, it starts to heal some, probably some problems, some inflammation. Um, when we see that over something so little as a small diet change, and we could see it as quickly as two weeks. Usually it takes, you know, a considerable amount of time to really change a sick animal or a sick person. But we, we see things so quickly that it's so rewarding that I, and the millennials are the best. Because they come to me and lots of times the dog's first thing is their baby. The dog's the, the first baby. baby. And so yeah. I'll start to show them what to do and I'll say, you know, feed variety. I'll open up my freezer and show them all the creepy parts of, mm -hmm. that we feed, which are all natural, you know, what they eat in nature. Yeah. And they kind of were like, oh, but then I watch what they do and how they feed and they get it. Yeah. They just, they just, just get it. Yeah. They just, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they like, run with it. Yeah. And like you said in the beginning is they don't have a choice. The only, the only thing that we can really give them is, is, you know, shelter, food and, yep. and water. And we're telling them every day what they have to eat. Yeah. It's the same thing. And it's the same thing. Junk, 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 over and over again. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And then they die early, usually from arthritic slash cancer, can't walk, can't go up the stairs, um, they die from dysplasia. All the, they die from all the itises. All, itis means inflammation of. They have, they have dental. First thing is, I mean, Periodontal disease. we're making the vets rich with that alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, just not chewing on a bone. Dermatitis, gingivitis, tendonitis, arthritis, gastritis. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're so they're dying early, and then we're just kind of punishing. But um, and so they're they're not they don't have a choice. And so when I see for us at the at the facility, um, when 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 dogs actually we have we have we usually have a stockpile of like decent food, mm -hmm. like borderline, like in between, like a little bit of junky, but also better than what you got right. in the middle. Um, because we, I, I just can't feed, I can't feed some of that stuff. Like they come in with Alpo and, and just 
garbage slash water in a can mm -hmm. um, because I'm because my overall goal is I'm not just a dog trainer. I, I, I want to transform the relationship and I want to transform the dog's life all around. So we exercise them. We have treadmills for the dogs to mm -hmm. run, which they never probably have. And like you said before, why put brand new oil in an engine that doesn't turn over? And so that's the same thing how I feel is when dogs come in with absolute garbage, and but I'm training them to be um, healthier mentally, I have to have some sort of balance. You gotta have fuel. Right. Yeah, you otherwise your hands are tight. Exactly. So that's that's really, really important. Um, so go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I So going back to dogs not having a choice and cats not having a choice, but yet we feed them crap all day. Um, and this and it's will not intentional. Right, because we don't know any better. This will create many diseases, so why don't you just touch base on what kind of diseases can can ha can come from feeding junk and not feeding a uh, uh, raw diet for the dogs, what kind of things can happen? Well, um, like you said, we, we don't give them a choice, but we, all, we really own a captive carnivore. Yep. You know, we own a, a, yeah. our, our dogs are yeah, yeah. in captivity, but I'm going to, I'll just read you some statistics that are current. 41% okay. um, of Americans own dogs, which you're mm -hmm. privileged to uh, I'm well aware of that, of. yeah. Um, I, I really think Every time I look at somebody's cell phone and I ask them if they have a picture of their kid, they're like, no, but here's Fluffy, yeah, here's, my <laughs> here's dog. Snoopy, and the same with me. They, yeah, yeah. People say, do you have kids? I go, yeah, 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 but here's my dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, I mean, it's on every one of our screensavers, so we love our dogs. Um, and I think, actually, too, to add to that, I think um, 17 to 20% of Americans actually have more than one dog. So well, they're like high. potato chips, right? Yeah, you just yeah. get them. <laughs> so... Um, with that said, as awesome as dogs are, they're not living nearly as long as they should. We have 21st century nutrition, 21st century medicine, medicine yeah, oh yeah, and we're absolutely. sick, and we die too short. So something's not right. Um, I'll just read you some stuff. Yeah, please do. So they're not living as long as they should, and this, the statistics are pretty scary. In the past five years, diabetes has risen by 900% Whoa. in dogs and cats, I'm sure. Um, obesity, Diabetes. Wow. Yeah, obesity is um, risen sixty percent. But the saddest of the statistics, the one that's the killer, the heartbreaker, is that cancer in dogs is at a staggering fifty percent. Wow. Fifty percent. One in two dogs will get cancer, and it's an epidemic right now. Um, research has shown that of all mammals in the world right now, the dog is has the highest rate of cancer of all. Wow. So if we could change that statistic with something simple, as um, diet, because and then if you if you intend to treat a dog that has cancer, you you will be financially impaired right. from it. Um, Just like humans, right? Like yeah. eat healthy now, so w when you're in your seventies to nineties. You don't have to pay for all the medical bills that you, you just chose not to, to eat right when you're younger, when your body yep. when your body develops and, and all that fun stuff. See, I, I tell everybody, for ourselves and our dogs, we want to um, live long and die short. Right. We don't want to die. We don't want to drag die. it out. Right. Live, you know, right. Gotcha. We, want, we want to be like a, a candle that gets blown out. Right. Time. And you told me an interesting thing that when, when your lab, I think, had passed at whatever right. age it was, 11, the vets, um, when they were, whatever they were doing, I'm not sure. Oh, um, I was thinking of the my, teeth. yeah, that was my lab that, at 16, yeah. uh, they, the vet techs could not get over her teeth. They were perfect. Right. But she's eating a species-appropriate diet, and that is intended to give the right pH in the mouth. And, and, that, and that, that is huge, too, because when I do my pet CPR and first aid course, periodontal disease, uh, basically mouth decay, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, just like gingivitis and things like that, that we can get. Because dogs are eating, so if you were to break that open, the bag of Beneful, and open it up, it's all mush. Mm -hmm. And so their teeth aren't being cleaned, which then can cause all sorts of different diseases. Heart diseases. Heart diseases. Well, because people, and people, the way that I describe it to people is, and it makes a little bit more sense, because when you get the heart disease from, from your mouth, it's like, well, how does that correlate? How does that make sense? And I explain it like this, is if your mouth is full of bacteria and infected because it's not being cleaned like it should be naturally, from bones and whatever, mm -hmm. sticks, yep. whatever, yep. Um, then they're basically, every single time they swallow, they're swallowing all this bacteria and, and really, really harmful things for them. And so the bones, anyway, going back to your 16-year-old lab that had really good teeth at that age, 
veterinarians don't see good teeth normally because what they're getting, it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's, it's basically like if we were to take white bread and eat it every single day and that's it. Like you're just, you're just packing all that stuff up in your gums and it's just really, really nasty. Well, what it's actually called is auto intoxication. Mm. The, the, There's a word for you're, it. You're intoxicating yourself with toxins. Now I know. Because um, it's not supposed to sit there, right. that, that stuff. And, and the thing is, the quality of it too. Now, if, if vegetables sat on your teeth, it's very unlikely that you're going to get right. like, gingivitis and all these dental diseases. Right. But when you take this sludge of rendered rancid fats and sugar. rendered and rancid meats and sugar, and even in dog food, they throw away all the old meat goes in, goes to renderers that is rancid meat. They throw donuts still in the package. They throw bread still in cellophane and in the styrofoam. All that goes in a big vat, roadkill, euthanized into, pets. Into dog food? Goes in dog food. Whoa. Okay, when, well, you, when you feed your dog dog food, it's dog food. There's euthanized dogs and cats in our dog food. Really? Pretty, like millions and millions of dogs are euthanized every year. They're euthanized with sodium pentobarbital, yeah. you know, with the pink Chemicals. juice, yeah. which kills them, so that's a toxin. All that goes in big barrels. The renderer comes, takes them all, they bring them to the renderer. How is that allowed? Plant. It's, it's, it's allowed. It's allowed. Whoa. That's pretty crazy. So, and then that all gets heated. Grains get added, and yes, the, the premix, which is the synthetic vitamin mineral mix, which makes it complete and balanced for all stages of life, that gets all mushed together, and then it's extruded and it's baked and extruded into. And you get these little balls of, of slow, painful death. Yep. Okay. Let's go back to some more statistics. So have. yes. So anyway, with our um, so in the seventies, the average dog lived to about the age of seventeen. Now our average dog lives to be eleven, and for goldens, nine or ten. Goldens have the highest incidence of cancer. Because of breeding, overbreeding, I think, I think genetics. Po yeah, popular, yeah. It, being popular is not in a dog's best Yeah, it's the same thing when they talk about uh, the golden is also like the highest uh, biting dog in America or was wow. for a long time. And a lot of people are like, whoa, that doesn't make sense. Well, it does because if they're, if most of the population of Americans are getting goldens, then it's like more likely for them to bite people. It has nothing really to do with their it's behavior. Just, There's just more of them. Right, yeah. right. So 10% of cancer... Is, has been identified as genetics. 90% of cancer is lifestyle, lifestyle and environmental factors. So stress, obesity, infection, sedentary lifestyle, toxins, pollution are all a slice of the pie called cancer. But the biggest slice of the pie that's left that contrib contributes to getting cancer or not is diet. That's pretty amazing. That's the What's the percentage? The, um, I think it's you, six, the biggest percent... Whatever, all these other fat. well, 90% of cancer is lifestyle environmental. Right. So with that, is stress, nutrition, but genetics is only a small part. Mm -hmm. So when, when you take this whole pie called cancer and you start breaking it down, most of what we can affect is, is diet and nutrition. It's the variables that we can change. Exactly. Yeah. And I think... Um, and just adding fresh food in, ki in kibble three times a week will affect cancer. It'll even uh, it'll, 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 it'll affect the decrease by of, okay. of like by fifty percent at least. Wow. Okay, that's like, huge. So what what are some things that people can start doing right now? So if you start adding some of these things that you're about to talk about into your pet's diet, even if they still eat kibble, yep, it'll 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 decrease the 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 ability or the or, or the chances yep. yeah, of them getting cancer by almost fifty percent ish. Um, or which, more, which even if it was, not being conservative. And even if it was 10%, and you probably have this stuff at home. Right. So what are, what are some of those things? So right. Fre fre farm fresh eggs. Uh, no you cook them. Yeah. What do you do? You, you can cook them, but you'd be raw. You don't need to. You don't so need what do you to. do? You, you can crack throw the them. shell in, just crack them in the bowl. And just and if they don't, if they're not used to it like that initially, you certainly can scramble them or boil them or fry them. You know, that's not, that's okay. Farm fresh but, eggs. Yep. So when you go to the store and it says... Cage free, organic, it's whatever. Better. What are you, what are you it's looking even better for? if you know some farmer down the road. That right. You get. But if you don't, like if you're, if, if, like, you know, if you can't a lot of the listeners are from Australia, a lot of these guys are from Russia, uh, Canada, so New York City. If you can't go down to the road like we probably can here in upstate New York, um, 
what do you, when, and I want to be specific because I, it's important, right? Like if you go out and I say, go out and get some, some Greek, you know, non-fat yogurt and they go out and get like custard. Right. You know, it's gonna, then you're doing worse. So what are you looking for on the package? So you're looking for um, cage free, although, you know. Exactly. It's, it's, there's a, a lot of variables that, well, yeah. they're cage free, but, but really they're in a really big cage stuck together. Exactly. So what, what doesn't what do you, mean they're getting outside foraging, eating bugs and getting sunshine. So what do you, what do you, what you are you looking look on the package? For, like? um, Probably the most expensive eggs is probably what you're going to And there's, there are some local eggs at our local markets, and I'm sure there are in the cities. So you want to go to farmer's well. markets? Yeah, but if you don't want to do that, you, you still can get some local eggs that are good, better quality. It's, okay. it, you know, and an egg is still a wonderful, perfect protein, as close as perfect can be. It's good for so, us, too. Yeah. So um, I would add eggs. I would add a plop of coconut oil. Coconut that, oil cooked, you know, just, raw, just, uh, just raw, just raw, just raw, they tend to love it, it's a wonderful other um, form of fat, um, they can have, you know, of, of course we avoid um, raisins, chocolate, grapes, um, onions, avocado pits, um, what are some other stuff, um, like whole garlic, I know some garlic is okay, but whole and garlic, garlic, I mean, I think they'd have to eat like five or six, right, not, not, right, not cloves, but bulbs, mm -hmm. so, I don't believe garlic to be right, but a problem. If it, and if you've got some leftover spaghetti sauce that has onions and garlic in it, right, it's not going to kill them. That's the other thing too about five. about people, um, you know, just in general. Again, it, it we're so in, same thing with me. Like I, 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 you know, back in the day, I didn't realize that you know if a dog ate a Hershey Kiss that they weren't going to die. Right. And I'm like they're dead. <laughs> they ate chocolate. When in actuality, it's it's not that these things are just lethal deadly. They're just bad for them, which means they're not great for them. Just like if, if we have if we have Jack Daniels and Coke, we're okay. If we have six bottles, we're not okay. Right. So the more of it is just what we're talking and about. And I know so. Golden said have eaten an entire plate of chocolate chip cookies. Right. And, been, and they've lived to death. Right. So don't don't go out and feed your dogs yeah, we, this stuff. Not, but it's, it's not, not best practice. It's not best practice. So um, those are some things that are bad. What are some other things? So we have eggs, farm fresh eggs, if you can. Um, if you can give them any, any coconut organ oil, meat. Organ organ meat. Chicken livers in the store are very, very cheap. And you can get those cheap. Cheap, cheap. Yeah. We used to use that for cat, well, we still do it for catfish yeah. bait. You go buy chicken livers and they're like four bucks for a whole jar of them. I, think a, a, I think a little container like this is a dollar. Yeah. Um, and just keep in mind that if you feed too much, you might get a looser stool. So moderate, um, just moderate yeah. and just figure out what works and what doesn't. You know, if you get a loose stool and, and you're feeding them a super vitamin, big deal. Yeah, right. The next one's going to be normal. So, right. Or you what can add a plop of pumpkin and it might firm up their stool. Um, obviously, any some fermented foods, kefir, yogurt, not the stuff in the market that's full of chemicals, but something that that's a better quality. I make my own kefir, which mm -hmm. is a, a fermentation to milk, mm -hmm. and then you get cr crazy good. Friendly bacteria and friendly yeast. Um, what are some things like? Okay, so I go to the grocery store right now. So again, I think for me, if I didn't feed raw, mm -hmm. and it was the first time you kind of told me this stuff in the seminar that, the seminars that you've done here, I'm freaking out at home, right? If, if I'm feeding Beneful or if I'm feeding whatever kibble, I'm freaking out right now, and I want to go change my dog's lifestyle right now. What can I do? What's the transition? Um, do I just go straight? Do I go and get three things of steak, three things of beef, three things of chicken? Um, and before you answer that question, uh, I also want to say that there's, you can probably just Google or there's a bunch of different um, Facebook groups that you can be a part of, of like raw feed. So you can find somebody local or you can find somebody that can distribute to you if there's nobody local. So that's something that you guys can do, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. in a little bit. But if, if somebody wanted to just change right now and say, that's it, just like we do when we, we watch like Super Size Me with McDonald's, we yeah. say, yeah, we say, never. I'm changing right now. I'm, yeah. ne I'm never, whatever. Um, what what are some things people can go out right now to their local market and do? Well, first I would suggest that you don't freak out. You're you're doing the best you can, right? Or hopefully you're trying. And I always tell people, and it's not their fault. When you when you know better, you do better. So once you've you know once you've been given this information, you're you're, t you're a bit responsible for it. You you can choose what you want to do with that, but um, I you know I think we both want to empower people and inspire Definitely. people and not condemn anybody um, because everybody's got. Got to start somewhere. So I'd say if you've got kibble, my gosh, add some vegetables. Add some oil. You can add um, berries, strawberries, omega, yeah, blueberries, can, um, kale, broccoli, spinach. Spinach, yes. Um, I wouldn't add. Go, don't go crazy on the spinach, um, but it's certainly so. You, you know, use your deep leafy greens. Absolutely, lettuces, romaines, 
apples, parsley, yeah. um, and some dogs go crazy for certain things. Some love bananas, some love cantaloupe. My shepherd loves broccoli. Yeah. I have a vegetable mix that I get produced locally, yep. and I have um, broccoli, kale, sweet potato, apple, parsley, yellow squash, green squash, sometimes turnip greens, sometimes um, what's that? Uh, Swiss chard, mm -hmm. so whatever I can get that's seasonal. Sometimes, I, and it's their triple wash vegetables, minced. And the thing too about vegetables, if you feed vegetables, you do want to make sure that you you cut them up pretty finely or grate them. Because, right, you told me something. Yeah, about that. The, um, it is a carbohydrate, um, but it's obviously a living food. Um, but you want it, that grating tears the cell wall on the um, plant, so it makes the the nutrition, the nutrients more bio. Sucks it up. So, like, if your dog yeah, eats, you, if your dog eats, sucks down like one whole carrot, it's going to come out about as one, one whole carrot. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, gotcha. And it, it, it sometimes when you start feeding a pet vegetables, you're going to see them come out. But give their body a chance to, right. to learn how to assimilate it. Yeah, because they're, they're used to, like, you know, uh, it, you can get withdrawals from all that sugar. So they're used to, like, say we were just talking about when we went on break when we were switching memory cards and, and all that fun stuff, is, like, my cat is literally addicted to Friskies. Mm -hmm. Because when my cat was, my cat's nine now, and when I got a cat, I didn't, I wasn't planning on having a cat. I saved the cat's life, and that's what I got, um, because that's, the easiest thing to get, which is why we're having this conversation. But anyway, so they're they're addicted to that sugar, so it may take them time it does. To, to transition. Sometimes, which we've learned even in the seminars, is we'll plop down like raw like mackerel or something that we'll use, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. pop it down. And some dogs are like, ew, gross. And then other dogs are nailing like that bowl. Crack, yeah, yeah and, they, and they have never had raw in their life. Right. So anyway, I want to move back um, just to add in a couple different things. We said, obviously don't freak out, but you do want to do better right now and you want to go out and you want to get stuff. What are some, What are some besides all the berries, we talked about strawberries, blueberries, a lot of deep leafy greens. Mm -hmm. What are some proteins that you people can get? You can get, get? Cheap, cheap cuts of chicken. You can get chicken thighs, chicken, chi chicken, chicken cheap. drumsticks. Um, uh, and those are actually, um, we want to feed bone that's non-weight bearing bone when we do the right the, the raw mm -hmm. diet properly. So that means you have to add a calcium. You have to add calcium. Weight bearing so, so. bone would mean to me in my mind. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to say it would be like more of like a chicken wing versus more like a, a, a bone like a beef marrow. What do you What do you mean? So by so what bearing? I mean by um, so we don't feed weight bearing bone in the raw diet to be a digestible bone. So it's a weight bearing bone, bone would be on a, a cow, it's going to be a femur, the, the leg bones. Right. Um, on a chicken, it's going to be the, the thigh and the, the, the leg bones. But anything that's, got a, that's a cartilage bone is, and, and again, we could do, a, we'll do a whole seminar on how to put together yeah. a raw diet. Because I know, and there's a million um, resources on the internet mm -hmm. and, and great books. And I would tell you, go simpler than, I mean, there's people that formulate raw diets with databases and software and percentages, and there's others of us that feed variety and Whatever balance over get. time and proportions, more proportions. Yeah. So there's a lot of different schools of thought. You, we want to be thoughtful about how we feed raw because it is a responsibility that yeah. we take on if we're going to... If we're going to do it, we yeah. got to be mindful but of things. at the same time, we all need to chill out and just do better. Yes, do better. Um, so. so a non-weight-bearing bone is a chicken neck, chicken backs. Um, I consider feet to be a, a digestible bone. Just give it to them. Yep. Right? So they don't I mean, have to cook them. I mean, most of us, and... when people come over and I show them how to feed raw, I call my dog down to, to have her dem demo meal. She's and um, I've yeah. usually got a couple chicken necks in there, and, I, and the owners are looking over, watching Piper eat this raw food. And I say, now, pay attention, because it's going to be quick. Yeah. And so it's basically crunch, crunch, gulp, just like potato chip, the, the chicken Locked. necks down the hatch or two or whatever I gave her. And they're like, and they can, but she didn't die from it. I'm like, no, she right. had a pH of two sitting in her, you know. Right, and they so they can eat full bones, so of the uh, right kind, as long as they're a digestible bone, which is called a raw meaty bone, which is a cartilage type bone. So gotcha. even like pork necks, those would still constitute as a raw meaty bone. Okay. But you give it, you know, if you've got a dog that's gonna, if you've got a Labrador and they're gonna swallow yeah. it whole, it's that's cautionary. You know. What about, um, yeah, right. So in in everything that we talk about, and even in dog training, and same thing with nutrition and diet, just like with humans. It's a it's, of yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's discretionary, of course. It's not right. everybody can have the same things. This is this is very um, just right across the board of like what you what, what a baseline is. Yeah. In, in so um, other things like uh, I've even like if I if I I usually and you do a thousand times more than I do, but buy in bulk. 
Mm -hmm. um, so usually when we do a raw feed order, it's like two freezer fulls, or in right. your case, six houses full. Um, but <laughs> if if you run out, what I've done in the in the in the, in the past, I've just gone out and grabbed like ground turkey, ground beef, yep. ground chicken, and that's something that I think is really really safe for beginners to do. Super. How do you transition? So if you're on kibble and you Great do question. want to transition into raw, what's the first step to do that? Some people will do a cold turkey. Where here's your new no meal. No pun intended. Cold turkey. <laughs> So um, yeah, that would went by me. Um, so some people just do it like that, and yeah. um, and if the dog has some di you know some digestive Diarrhea upset, stuff. it's you know cleaning of the house or changing of the guards. Other people feel better um, adding a little more of whatever's raw and displacing the kibble with that amount. Mm -hmm. um, some people will start adding raw into the kibble. I'm not a big fan of that, mm -hmm. although I still see dogs do well. The reason I don't like it so much is because again of the digestive time yeah. you're asking this raw meat to sit in the gut for way longer than it normally would because it's got to be processed with process the kibble. with this kibble that gotcha. like, takes forever but I, I've seen and, and heard of lots of people that do it and, and it's pretty seamless so you just you go out like you said grab grab like you would you can go to even like um, like the shop and save and like those, those oh yeah the like the really nice right yeah and you just go out and you get some ground turkey ground chicken if you don't feel comfortable with the bones right away and just start kind of feeding them like that and what we talked about before is the stool mm -hmm. um, and so less is more when it comes to raw as well as far as um, how much so when we talk about like a normal adult German Shepherd it's like four cups a day sometimes five or six cups a day depending on their job but with raw food it's just like us like if we were to eat like I usually in the morning you just do fruits I usually do mango raspberries I'll do some avocado, a little bit of yogurt, and a banana or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of food, but like, it, it, it's, or, or I'm sorry, it's not a lot of food, so it's not like six slices of bacon and toast and eggs and, and potatoes, but anyway, my point is, is it's more nutritional, so you can get away with feeding less, mm -hmm. so you're not going to go out and get four cups of... It's nutrient dense. Right. So, um, ballpark... And I looked on the website that you that we I used to use, and you probably referred to me as the raw food calculator, mm -hmm. and it's not there anymore. I know. Yeah, I so, know that. so ballpark. So when you when you that's the best. That's a good question. It's what everybody asks. How much do I feed? Because how do you convert kibble to, to fish to and look like, bones? You know what the volume is of wet meat. Right. Um, generally, we want to feed our dogs towards their ideal weight. So if you have a dog that's underweight or a dog that's overweight, we sort of figure approximately what their ideal weight would be. And generally, it's 2 to 4% of that weight mm -hmm. is going to convert into their, their raw diet. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's just raw muscle meat. It means the other stuff that you add. Yeah. It might mean um, the, the chicken necks or whatever you add, um, the veggies, that kind of thing you would add. So when you, are you looking for a calculator? No. Nope. Oh. Um, so when you, when you do that, it's just a calculation. And again, it's not an exact science. If your dog is starving, um, add more. If they're very content and getting plump, then you add less. It's just a lot of common sense. And it's a, so whatever that number comes to is, is, and if you feed your dog twice a day or three times a day, you're going to, um, you're going to calculate, you know, like if it's 1.7 pounds a day or 1.5, you're going to um, divide that into how many meals you feed. So a puppy, you're feeding a furnace. You're right. feeding like as though it's an adult. And you could, for a puppy, you can, you can um, calculate 10% of their current weight or 2 to 4% of their projected adult weight, and it usually comes out to be about the same. And one thing I'll point out, too, um dealing with uh, some of the working dogs that we deal with, so the police dogs that are out for sometimes search and rescue dogs that are out for two to three days at a time that are just, just like athletes, just like us. Like if we're out, gonna have behind the exactly. Like, you know, one of my friends is a professional boxer and he eats like an insane, and I'm like, where is it going? But they're burning it. You know, they're exercising almost the entire day. So anyway, that's something that plays a big role apart um, or with what Lisa was saying is, is and, and for me too, like sometimes I'll just um, you know give my dogs what I think that they need. If they're if I feel like they're gaining a little bit weight because they're not as active as they were last month, mm -hmm. I'll cut back a little bit. Or if I feel like maybe they can add a little bit, I'll add a little bit more. Um, and so that's important too. Is the dog's exercise and lifestyle is really going to play an important role in what they're eating. And just like again with athletes and um, anybody that's working out a lot, um, certain dogs may need certain things. Um, like 
different fishes and different yep. proteins and things like that. And more fat, like duck has a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. um, There's certain proteins to... that have the um, the factors of some can be more warming, some can be cooling. So sometimes if you have an inflamed dog, a holistic veterinarian might mm -hmm. suggest that you feed cooler proteins or, or certain vegetables. You know, all foods have different properties and different things yep. they donate. So. Um, that's the beauty of food science, really, is, is what does it do? But, but like, you're touching on something that you probably don't realize, is that you're saying, you know, I just feel like maybe I should do this or shouldn't do that or should add that or might add this. You do really start to get kind of intuitive about feeding a raw diet once you start. Um, you know your dog, and you're like, hmm, their coat. Yeah. I'd like to see it a little more like this. And so you might start to increase maybe some fats, or you might, some better oils, or you may take away something that could be kind of inflammatory or maybe a seasonal issue, but you do start to, um, you do, I, I find so many people that feed raw, they really, despite the work that it caught, that it yeah. is, and I really, literally, it's, if you invest five minutes more a day to feed your dog, it's, that's, the, it's not a big investment. Right. But, and as long as you're organized, and I, I you know, we could talk about yeah. all that in another time, about setting yourself up for success, but... Um, you really do find that you start to learn your dog. And, and there could definitely be a day of fasting where they have a big old shank bone or, that's or bone broth that day. And that's, I mean, in nature, they fast a lot. Right. And that's not, what we not do. Not in America, but. Yeah, that's what we do with like the wolves, uh, like feast and famine type thing where we try to make it as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. We talk about natural dog training um, and we talk about natural nutrition. Um, a lot of times in humans, it's, it's becoming more and more. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts about nutrition for humans as well because I think it's so interesting, so interesting. how complicated and, and intense our bodies are and how we break down things. And fasting is becoming really important in some athletes, uh, professional athletes and people who run like ultra marathons and things like that, that they're fasting so their body can break down a bunch of different stuff. It's very interesting. Um, fasting too allows the biggest system of the body next to the skin mm -hmm. a chance to rest. Mm -hmm. And dogs intuitively know, and, and a lot of sick animals and people should too, we do have times of fasting because Reserving. we're not asking that system to be right. taxed constantly. And that is a lot of times when healing occurs. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's hard to fast. It's hard, There's yeah. two brown eyes looking at you, but, yeah. um, but it's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. And, and the same thing with me, like, uh, we're going to talk about packaging and how, like, how you guys can see food, just so you guys know, anybody who hasn't seen raw, just to get an idea what it looks like, uh, what the ingredients on here versus in there, etc. here in a second. But um, sometimes if, if I don't thaw my food out or something, I'll just wait till in the morning. Not a big deal. They're not going to die. Yeah. They'll be hungry. And, They'll and be upset. And honestly... This is not blasphemy, but if you if you forget to thaw a dog's food diet, you know, their raw diet, and you still have dog food and they get a scoop of kibble, well, it was a McDonald's night. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? They, nobody's going to die. Right. And I say, you know, do 80% right and you can screw up 20% pretty much. Exactly. Not yeah. intentionally, but. Yeah. Um, and going into the packaging and things like that, I want to also intertwine travel. Mm -hmm. It's really important for me. Like, I converted my van. It's got a whole kitchen in it. I, I don't have the ability to carry as much food as I would like. Um, so when you, so you know, one of my friends who is also a world-renowned dog trainer as well travels a lot. Um, you know, even traveling all over the country and things like that. Um, sometimes just using kibble on the road is better than, you know, good kibble on the road is better than feeding gas station kibble on the road. And really, again, if we didn't know this, we would still be doing what we've been doing. Yeah. And so if we if we need to use it to make this beneficial and to keep. Our, make our life work it's fine yeah really, the, the dogs are so forgiving and it amazes me that some dogs live and are as healthy as they are on exclusively a kibble diet Crap it's diet. pretty amazing so yeah you well, know and even on the road too you can find fruits and vegetables and meat and things like that right. um and that's what I'm yep you can always add supplement um the, another great thing to supplement a raw diet is um muscles you can get in the market very cheaply just the, the little muscles um, they, you know, that's in the seafood section it's cheap but it, it donates wonderful trace minerals that most likely dogs wouldn't get in a natural form right and it almost like throw in a sardine you can get sardines whole any fish or food that's whole is going to donate more than you know the way we feed we're buying parts not uh, i'm not throwing a chicken out, although there are people that feed that prey model and it's yeah. uh you know, it works, it it's better works than, for them. Better than 
you know, feeding beneficial. You good? Well, out there, I want to just show them like what some of the foods that we get uh, or around here look like, so they have an idea of like what the hell does raw come in? Do I do I buy chickens and cook the cut offs? You know, people don't know. Um, hey, Zach, do you want to just go quiet, Hansi, down for a second? I'll do. Yep. Um, so anyway, um, this is so this is like a pack leader. Um, is this a um, so it's made in the USA? Which is, yeah. is this is something that you can get? Oh, yeah, I okay. offer this, but. You know, where where other... can uh, so this isn't this is just locally? No. Okay, you can get this. This is pretty much through New York, New York State. Basically. New York State. Okay, yep. and you can. So some companies I've I've seen some of my clients from out of state from New York City. They've actually they get raw in like the Chinese food containers, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh yeah, it comes in like this little cardboard yeah. box. Um, so I think the best suggestion for people um, to immediately they're like, wow, this sounds so much better. How do I get into it? Is Find some, if you're on Facebook, find some Facebook groups where you can just Google search like raw dogs and then maybe just, you know, hey, I'm from Arizona. Where, you know, does anybody know anybody that does raw food? That's one it's of the best ways to go. It's an underground railroad, basically. Yeah. People don't realize it, but, and it's not going away. It's not a fad. It's, no, it's coming, it's coming, it, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. And, and the more people hear about it, the more aha moments they have that it just makes sense. Exactly. And I want to really quick, can you hand me the benefit? Sure. So I want to... Um, oh, by the way, this bag's about nine years old. Yeah, nine years old, and it probably still taste. looks and smells good. That's one thing I forgot to mention is... Um, big important thing here is... Um, dogs love this stuff. But they don't know what it's doing to their bodies. So they get like the gravy train or the benefit because it's packed with so much sugar. It's just like if I if I could like McDonald's tastes awesome for about three and a half minutes. Get that splitting headache, right? Right. <laughs> right. Um, it's Taco Bell, you know, all yeah. these different places. Man, it tastes good because they it's meant they to taste they're good. <laughs> meant to taste good. And so that is one thing that I will say is your dog will love this, and I think that that's the trickery that we fall under, like lollipops. Yeah, good, but it's literally sugar. So anyway, um, so I just want to read off the first, as many ingredients as I can get to before I can't pronounce them, which is not going to be many, but um, ground yellow corn, chicken byproduct meal, uh, corn gluten meal, whole wheat flour, animal fat preservatives with mixed... Okay, I'm done. For us. Yep. Uh, rice flour, middling, beef, soy sugar, and then salt, calcium, and then a bunch of things that I can't, and then a bunch of dyes, more dyes than ingredients it looks like to make it look so nice. Um, and then I'm just going to read off. So you mentioned salt, so yeah. where the Yeah, so we talked about before. <laughs> the salt comes, let's see. Yeah, so salt is probably the tenth one down out of the probably 50th ingredient in this bag, the small bag. Uh, and then after that is the calcium. Animal digest, potassium chloride, and then comes the dried carrots, dried peas. Sorry, we had a, a little phone call there on my phone. So, um, so all of the stuff that we were talking about before, the dried carrots and peas and everything is after the salt, which means it can only have one pea, one carrot. Absolutely. Right. So, um, did you see how many grains and soy and, and middling and, and different yeah. the way this? Yeah. Things are fractionated into yeah. because they, they can add more if they make the percentages less right. when they make each. So it's like a loophole. And then, um, so the other uh, thing, too, when right. you open this bag of dog food, it, it does have a protective coating to prevent the fats from being as rancid as they already are. Mm. But how many people buy a 50 pound bag, leave it open to air, which causes oxidation? Rancid fats are really bad. Mm. And so the Dog food's generally full of it, which is very, very inflammatory. Right, and it causes, all, so you get an older dog that's eating this junk, it's causing things to go Younger worse. dogs that you're ruining their health on, you yeah. know. Yeah, and so, that's that's something I started getting the CBD oil and how beneficial mm -hmm. it can be for humans and dogs, which is, I'm doing a video on that next, but, um, so anyway, so that's what's in, and again, that's the crappiest stuff you could probably get. So, go, when you flip your bag at home, hopefully it doesn't have all that stuff in it, but, um, I just want to read you off, um, one of the, uh, this is the chicken formula. So the ingredients, uh, and I'm going to list every single one of them because it's not going to take me as long, and I know how to say them. Muscle meat, ground bone, chicken hearts, chicken liver, chicken gizzards, apples, blueberries, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, romaine lettuce, jumbo sweet potatoes, carrots, Italian parsley, celery, zucchini, yellow squash. So like all of those things I would eat in a heartbeat. 
And then same thing with just another company. Um, how big is this? Two pounds. So this is a two pound tube, um, which actually is really, really nice in the freezer because <laughs> the two pound tubes you can fit a lot more of. Um, it just it we makes nicely it makes Tetris a little any and faster. Mm -hmm. um, and then this this would be like a five pound tube, which same thing. The first there's a lot of different um, additives to this, but they're not ad they're not bad additives. Um, they would be supplements and things of that sort, and folic acid and all that dried stuff that's actually beneficial for the dog. But uh, a lot of the first ingredients here in this food is beef, beef liver, beef uh, or liver tongue, ground chia seeds, krill oil, whey, alfalfa meal, barley grass, zinc, amino acids. Magnesium acids or amino acids, um, and then a bunch of vitamin supplements: vitamin B12, uh, vitamin or amino acid complex, vitamin D, um, and then a bunch of dried uh, other fermentation things that we mm -hmm. talked about before, which is really good. Um, and so, like this is like what a five-pound tube would look like, and. Um, Really what it comes down to is when you order this raw food, the best thing to do is get yourself a freezer mm -hmm. as, big as, as big as you can get. Bigger than you think you need Yeah, to. exactly. I have actually, I bought a freezer and I'm like, okay, this should hold me over. And now I have two of those small freezers which still don't hold me over. Um, but yeah, if, the biggest you can get, the biggest you can afford and fit in your, your living quarters. Um, for me, I put them in my garage. Yep. Garage and then I'll, space, yeah. yeah, and then I'll defrost them. Um, and then if you have a smaller dog and one dog only, and that you could probably get away with ordering bulk and just stick it in your regular freezer. Really? Small dogs to get a tablespoon a day, yeah. you can't not, much. can't not feed them raw. It's right. so affordable. But I want to say yeah. too um, that, I want to say that, I think I forgot what I was going to say. I got something else if you want me to go with that or do you want to try? Okay, I was just going to say... Um, the other thing that I've been doing a lot of research on, or I've been I've been intaking research on, I should say, listen to a lot of podcasts on nutrition and what's good and what's bad, um, is the uh, one of the fads that's that's or fads that's been happening is um, uh, vegan diet, and and I say that fab because it's just moving so progressionally. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't have any problems with it at all. It's just becoming something that people are grabbing onto mm -hmm. because of the ideology of them not wanting to hurt innocent animals, which I've done a lot of research on, and actually um, the amount of animals that are killed by making one single batch of tofu is unbelievable, wow. actually, because of all the all the stuff that they need to make it and all the animals that they're killing in the fields to do so. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really like a lose-lose a, a situation, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes... Anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, um, but I respect everybody's diet for their own purposes, but... Um, Primitively speaking, there's even some people who um, can't go vegan because their bodies won't let them. They'll shut down. They have all sorts of different um, issues mm -hmm. um, because their body needs certain things. And then other people can get away with it, but it's almost like a science. You really have to work hard to do it. And um, and for me, personally, I'm just about balance. I think that we should all have a lot, a lot, a lot of fruits and vegetables, but I also think that like my body needs certain proteins in order to, to stay as healthy um, as it should be to keep going. And mm -hmm. some people can get away with vegan diets. So anyway, I want to talk about the vegan diet for dogs. I've seen myself personally, some of the wolves and, and that were held, cap held captive, I should say, um, you can buy wolves in certain states in the United States, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you know they, they were fed vegan diets and they completely lost all their vision. Um, very arthritic and die at early ages because again they're not being ch they can't choose what they want what they can have and whatever so can you touch base on and again if if you can do vegan and it's healthy do it awesome great that's wonderful but for my personal interest is it possible for animals such as a carnivore such as let's say canine and felines cats and dogs is it possible for them to to do a vegan diet or is it like us where well, it kind of depends on this, the breed and their their habits. I mean, what are, what are, what's your experience? With I, that? I think a vegan diet is a disaster. Um, it's just counterintuitive. They they're not designed for that. Their teeth are not designed for crushing mm -hmm. or uh, for um, the grinding of of herbs mm -hmm. and grasses and vegetation. Mm -hmm. Their 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 front teeth are for snatching and holding. They've got teeth for ripping and tearing and, and for breaking a bone. It, they're just biologically, it, they're just not designed for it. And I know that it's a trend in some places. I think we're, like you saw, I think mm -hmm. we're going to start seeing all kinds of dege degenerative issues. Yeah, we're, we're definitely already we're seeing see that. deficiencies like crazy. What I, what I really respect and appreciate mostly, uh, again, when you get the people in and they think, um, well, I don't like that for my dog. or I, I don't think my dog will react properly to that. 
when they go to a professional. It doesn't have to be me that's telling them, well, mm -hmm. it's not about you. Right. It's about the animal that you chose to take under their wing until they're dead. And I think it's an ideology thing where I really respect the people who are vegan because it's the diet that they prefer. And they're very self-disciplined. Right. And, and they can do that, but a lot of people can't. Um, but I really respect the people who understand that their dogs are, they, they are carnivores and they need to eat meat in order to do certain things and you know, survive uh, healthily anyway. Because they can probably survive with it, but they're going to have so many deficiencies because they're primitive, you know, instinctual Well, paths. it's going to catch up with you. Right. And then, and then you're going to be putting out fires and, and filling in holes that are right. of nutrient de deficiencies. Right. And, and I, I think, think the... People knowing that dogs are carnivores, when we feed this... Somehow, this doesn't feel like a carnivore. Right. And so, when I show people about the raw diet, they're liberated almost. They're like, oh, that just makes sense. Yeah, and, that's what it was for me, for sure. It was so wonderful when something makes sense and you can do it. And like, oh, so I know what my train of thought. You were saying, like, where can people get stuff? We have, we have tons of um, access to raw food. We just have, you know, the best thing is if you can find a co-op or a group that's like-minded and you start to buy things together, you can buy in bulk. Maybe somebody doesn't want to buy a case of chicken necks that's 40 pounds, but what if, what if four of you go in on it right. and you have enough that'll last you a couple months? Or what if you can, can find a source for um, certain other, other things, vegetable source? This is what I did to start the group that I facilitate. I, it took me a long time to find what I found, but now that I have it, um, I have wonderful sources of stuff. And, there, and also remember that the foods that we're feeding are part of the human food market generally. Yep. And, and these are discard items of the food industry. Chicken feet. Who the, you know, yep. Well, now we're using chicken feet because we're making a lot of bone broth, and it's wonderful for that. But Asian markets are a great place to look for stuff. Um, like you said, the, the markets that are discounted. Mm -hmm. um, Talk to All the these. butcher, yeah, yeah. Um, and and certain meat markets have access. Any place that gets poultry generally has access to. Um, ground turkey and all, all these things, gizzards. I mean, none of this stuff gets thrown out. You could get. I got cases of this stuff. Farmers and hunters. Yeah. Too. Don't Gizzard. don't be ashamed yeah. to beg and yeah. ask your friends. You know, yeah. if you can have the yeah, if you know, especially out west, for the people um, who are hunting elk and are hunting uh, and harvesting uh, moose and elk and so all these much goes to waste. Yeah, and a lot of it goes to waste because people just want the back straps and whatever. And um, and uh, you know, over the years, I've. I've even, uh, you know, taken taken the the deer that friends and family has harvested and given them, you know, ve venison is really high in protein. It's really good meat for us too. Yep. Um, and those are some things. Those are like those are like uh, the fruit of the forest that the like you just right, yeah. you cannot get in the stores for whatever reason. It's all grass fed and you grass fed, food, and, and it's, it's fabulous. Yep, and it's local usually. Mm -hmm. You know, they're eating the same Clean. things. Yep. So those are some things too. Um, that are really important that you guys can do because you probably, you know somebody that hunts, say, hey, next time, come deer season or come whatever season, turkey season, which is in fall and, and, and spring, don't forget about me because I'll take all the stuff that you don't want and, and my dogs will... will and you know, when hunters hunt and they've got kind of some stuff that's a year old by then, it goes in the trash. Tell yeah, them, tell them yeah. hey, that, that's why your point about the freezer yeah. space, get a freezer bigger than you think you need. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you're going to... You exactly. turn into a beggar, and you're going to take yeah, it. Yeah, and all that, all that venison that you got two years ago that you're like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to. I got a dog that yeah, wants it. Got a dog that doesn't care about freezer burn. Right. Um, I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, is the price? So, um, I believe that I get uh, my beef complete, which means it comes with all of the additives um, that you don't because you can. So the raw that I get, you can buy just like beef, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just organs and just beef, and then you can add vegetables and all the other additives, uh, vitamins and minerals in there if you want. Um, but generally, I'll, I'll find it for 250 to $3 a pound. Mm -hmm. Is that usually ballpark what people should be looking for, for just for beef? Chicken's um, usually a little bit yeah. less expensive. I mean, you can source out um, chicken yourself if you want to. I, I don't feed a lot of chicken. I feed a lot of chicken raw meaty bones. I, I more lean on chicken for the necks, the backs, the feet, that kind of thing. Wing, wings used to be thrown out until we decided to put them in blue cheese dressing. Yeah. yeah, so, but you could get turkey wings by the case. So, um, th this is 5.30 for a two pound tube, so it's, that's a little yeah. bit less. So this would be $5.30 for, for this, and this will last a medium sized dog, like a day or two? Probably uh, two days, maybe. Two days? Yeah. And then a smaller dog, almost a maybe. week? Yeah. yeah. 
Cool. So that's that's it, pretty inexpensive. Different, I mean, I've been to some places where I've literally seen a tube of a beef mix right. for 25 pounds, and I... Like yeah. How that's not sustainable to a right. raw feeder. And, and, the, and the other thing, if you if you want to feed raw or you, or you want to do better, take the pressure off yourself. You don't have to be perfect. Just just start doing start. better. Like, yeah. Just like us. You, it can't be more affordable than your own diet. Exactly. And it's just and, like us too. I think expensive. I think if you if you watch these Netflix things and you're like, holy crap, you know. And and I agree with I agree with like the inhumane farming and and all of that. There's no there's no doubt. And I think that that's where the veganism. Uh, oh, sure. culture has, has been created is if you eat meat then you automatically hate animals when in actuality the animals that my friends and family hunt are the animals that are going to die of starvation and they're going to die of a cold winter and, and suffer when in actuality they're going to die anyway and it could be a very painful death and that's yeah, yeah, that's kind of but, but yeah it is a part of life but one thing before I forget is um, so places and I, it's a it's a German based when I was in Germany I, I saw all these Aldi's and I was like Aldi's holy crap they have Aldi's here and I guess that that's where they come from the Aldi's Mart um, and a lot of people across the country do have Aldi's and that's a that's a they, they sell this big I think you were talking about huge thing of, of, of ground beef which is a a good inexpensive place to start uh, price rights places that just have um Discounted stuff is is great for our dogs and, and great even food. your store butcher can maybe get yeah. people's stuff and, and you know you've got um, Like like the Asian markets have all kinds of icky stuff that would be great for the dog fish for heads and yeah. chicken feet And none of that don't discount any of that. It's all valuable like yeah. when you look at a fish head There's different fat values there the Eyeballs, eyes have brains. different things the guts the right. glands the the scales yeah, so why I mean, my grist- dog gets whole sardines I, I usually I keep kitchen scissors in my little yeah. food drawer but um, I'll cut it up and within two days she's had a sardine and, the, and there's your, your yeah. fish oil yeah it's, just, it's a grizzly bear you know there's a yeah. the reason why they're sitting at the bank <laughs> licking their chops during the salmon run yes yeah. they're 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 getting all that nutrients that they need to hibernate and there's there's a reason why it's bears main things. yeah, they're, yeah. They're, one of their main proteins is fish and it's because they need all that fatty oils and all that mm-hmm. in the berries to, to hibernate. And I think we and, do more than we know. Yeah, yeah. Fat is not the enemy. It's, we want good fats. Yeah, right. Well, you want good fats, not processed fats, not not literal fats that are that are going That's into it. processed yeah. garbage. And so, um, good. So I think this is a ton of information to start. Uh, I think in the future, what we can do is, is we can put together maybe a couple tutorials on both, you know, popping the fish in the bowl and, and, and how to how to start the process of feeding feeding the dogs, what to put in, what to take out. I, and and then, even how to start. Yes. You know, I tell people if you the first step is your most important step. Just go get it be in forward motion. Yeah. And I'll usually say go to the dollar store, get a couple of shoe bins with lids. Determine that you're gonna use one produce drawer for your dog food. Get a couple of placemats. Get a little clean, a bottle that you can put some kind of a natural cleaner in mm-hmm. to, to disinfect your area. You're going to treat it like you treat when you when you cook for yourself. It's the same thing. Um, get some serving spoons. Make sure you get some freezer space. Stock up on whatever you're going to contain them in, whether it's Ziploc bags, plastic containers, glass containers, whatever you want. Yeah. Just get a bit organized and then look yeah. at this big you know, mountain of fear that you have and just... Just start. Yeah, and your dogs and, will and be sitting there. And you're gonna like you're gonna just exhale and say this is not that big of a deal. Yeah, I I use uh, the rubber made. I used to use the bowls, mm-hmm. and now I use just like the, the stackables. Yeah, the stackables, like yeah. the big ones, because you like could, money in the bank. Is it? Yeah, see you all stack them because the the bowls actually take up a lot of room. Yeah. So I just use the stackables, and I have three dogs, and feeding them raw for three dogs, and I have a dog that's 150 pounds, I have a dog that's 40 pounds, and I have another dog that's 50 pounds, so um, I have to defrost a lot of food, but yeah. buying the complete package, it's so easy to just plop it in, and I know that it's better than the stuff in the cans and the stuff in the bags. And what do you see with your clients, um, with changes with their dogs? I see, with- well, first of all, there's a story that I was going to say earlier that I completely forgot, and this is a true story. One of my clients brought in uh, a a German Shepherd puppy, probably a year old, but she also had a, like a 13-ish year old German Shepherd, which was older. Um, but the dog really couldn't move around a lot, and the dog was when she'd come to training, the other dog would stay in the car. And uh, she had asked me about, oh, what's in the freezer? I said, oh, it's just raw food. I don't push it. Like I, I'm not that guy, you right, know. Right. Um, I don't have enough education to push that. I just know that it's better, and I can at least guide them in the mm-hmm. right way. So I said, "Oh, it's just raw food." And they said, "Oh," and I said, "I said a couple of the benefits." They said they try it. So anyway, that dog, after um, a couple of weeks of raw food, was moving way better. 
um, was, was actually operating way better. So that's one true story that has happened in the last three months that an arthritic older dog had gotten a little bit better nutrients. And even if it wasn't due to the, the bones and the, and the arthritis getting better, which it probably was, but the dog just felt better. It, it actually ooh, had some energy. Right? It actually had some good proteins and had some good fat that actually gave the dog energy instead of slop. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, is um, dog's behavior, I can see a definite immediate change. And besides their energy, is, is the ability to be cognitive of things and remember, oh yeah, like, like we were talking about before. You give your kid a Pop-Tart, um, a big thing of high fructose corn syrup uh, waffles with a bunch yep. of junk in it and a bunch of margarine. Um, by third period or halfway through their day, they're going to be sleeping versus somebody who's, yes. who's fed, um, you know, fruits and vegetables and maybe a bowl of cereal versus that. And, and so anyway, I, I find it that the focus and the behavior can definitely have a significant change due to their diet, much like we can, for and, sure. And it's, you know, this should all be common sense to us, but it, it's... It's like once we learn that if this is what the paycheck it. we're going to get, mm -hmm. exactly, you can't unlearn it. You can't. So it, it's just, it, for us it makes sense because mm -hmm. we've seen it and we've maybe researched it and know that, it, yeah. that it's, makes sense. Know, it's just it's, scientifically correct. Exactly. Right? It, it, there's, no, there's no question that the stuff that's in the bags that we're feeding our dogs is absolute garbage. But I think we know that. We just don't know what else to do. And within this information, it's an, it's, it's an ability to just go, I'm just going to start doing things better for my dog because I love my dog. Well, if you love your dog, then love your dog. Yeah. You know? and, we, and really, we want to tell people that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to, there's been this restriction for people to feel like, if I don't do it perfect, I shouldn't do it at all. Right. And how can I mess up with this scientific um, concoction? And, and, like, we have to really rewind the tape back yeah. to maybe 1930 yeah. and say, listen, before that... Every yeah. dog was a carnivore in the real sense of the word. Right. Um, oh, so we. Yeah, and, and when dogs go out and eat frogs, and they, and they chase squirrels, they eat and they grass, and you know, the owners yeah. all upset. They eat grass. And go, yeah. They're, they're yeah. getting something they need. Obviously, yeah. it's not because they want to puke all the time. Yeah, and it's not. And I, I've, I've even had dogs that come in with huge deficiencies, and they'll eat rocks. And, oh, my dog eating yep. rocks and stones. And I'm like, well, that's telling you something. Your dog is an animal. So many you need deficient. to. And I think that you know, and everybody out there knows what I do. Um, you know, or at least if they do know what I do, they know that I'm so about nature and balance on, on natural primitive instincts. Mm -hmm. If you work with nature and you work with the natural things that you have to work with, then it goes so smoother. If you go against it hard, yeah. then it's so hard to, off. yeah, and, and it's just like that with behavior and, and everything with dogs, is if you go completely against what they naturally know. A, a puppy makes a mistake, the mom corrects it, they get it from the get-go, even before they can open their eyes. And then if we do it, um, people who don't understand dogs actually have a big fuss about it, and it's the same thing as I was talking about with the wolves who ate the bird, mm -hmm. the baby bird. What do you think that they, that's, that's natural? Are you supposed to re-educate them on yeah. that issue? So I think it's really important that people just know, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to sit down and do this with you, but I think our next video and probably our next podcast as well is maybe just put together um, some bowls that people can actually see actually what we're talking about. And we did and, that in the um, Yeah, in the seminar. seminar. It's so fun to... It we, was, yeah. What we did in the seminar is we basically had 10-ish uh, people and... During a... During the... During the snowstorm. Yeah, during a snowstorm and... Uh, we got some food out. We basically put, you know, you know, whole fish, like heads, eyes, gills, everything, whole fish, and see what dogs would eat. Some dogs would scarf it, other dogs wouldn't. But I think that that's what we'll we'll do next time is really just put together something yeah. like that. That'll be really cool. Um, and then for those of you, let's just give um, a little bit of information if anybody wants to contact Lisa um, about what we're talking about. Um, and or if you have any good um, references, mm -hmm. books, websites, like you can that. start plugging that now and then. Uh, We'll wrap it up after that. Yeah, we're uh, and uh, you can find out so much stuff online yourself, or like if people contact me. I have some stuff that I think is really very digestible. No pun intended. Yeah. Um, for them to get started, just start yeah. making small steps. Especially if you have a puppy, or you may buy a pup, buy get a puppy from a breeder yeah. that that requires you to feed raw, and they're like ah. Yeah. Um, but lots of good first steps. Um, but yeah, I mean, could you post my email or something? Yeah, I could. I could post it on uh, on the on the YouTube. But for the, for those of a lot of the people are going to be listening. Mm -hmm. um, so, are there some websites that you know off the top of your head? Do you have a Facebook? Well, group I like uh, a company called Dogs Naturally Magazine. That, Dogs Naturally Magazine. Yep. Okay. And it, uh, it's a wonderful resource, and they do international webinars and seminars, and mm -hmm. most and it's all raw fed, holistic, a lot of homeopathy and minimal vaccinating. 
um, lots and lots and lots of education on all aspects of dog health and nutrition. Good to I know. think they've donated a huge uh, resource of information to the world. Um, and, any, and if you ever have a question about something, say like natural tick and flea mm -hmm. preventative, you could do Dogs Naturally Magazine. Flea and tick. Yeah, and then have and, a And you're going to get some really great um, articles up. So yep. there, that's a good resource. Um, there's, so, there's so many even websites that offer raw dog food, like Darwin's or Steve's Real Food or... Darwin's.com? Yeah, I think so. Or just Google Darwin's. Yeah, well, Darwin's, yeah. And then, but a lot of times they're very informative about nutrition right. as well. Yeah, and they should be because yeah. it, that's that's part of it. Same thing with us in dog training. We have to teach them why and how. And hey, what was the other one? Um, Darwin's Steve's Real Food. Steve's Real Food. Um, there's, there's a lot of really great companies out now. Yeah, um, and then I would suggest just also if you're on Facebook, researching uh, just raw, raw for dogs, things like that, and you'll get a whole mess of them. Yep. And you can, those forums are super, super, super beneficial because you're basically joining a group of people that have been doing this or are on the same page as you are, and they're like, I don't know what the hell to do. Um, and you just ask your questions. Hey, I got a 14-month-old German Shepherd. What do I do? And that's the place to start because there are people out there that really want to help you and educate you, you know, trying to like what we're doing now. So. Yeah, and I have a, a private Facebook page for my group and um, I tell everybody it's not private because of snobbery. It's private because the understanding is if you join, you'll be kind, you'll be inspiring, you'll be motivating. Right. You'll, you'll not be like nice. every, not like everything else on the internet. Yeah. It's so negative. it's like though I you know I say if you come here you're safe. If you're if you're feeding kibble and you're new to this, you're safe here. If you, whatever you want to do will help you. But mm -hmm. that's our that's our environment. So that's the reason that I have it. It's private, and that's why lots of groups. Might be private. Yeah, they a lot want of, to say you're yeah. gonna. Yeah, we're gonna they don't play wanna, nice. Yeah, exactly. And do you want to add that to this? Um, no, I think we'll skip it. Maybe okay. next time. Yeah. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll sign off here. Okay. And then um, if anybody has any questions, you can always uh, leave in the comments uh, on YouTube and then uh, in the podcast. Uh, if you're if you're listening on the podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, America's Canine Educator slash ed or youtube slash america's canine ed actually is what it is and you can ask your questions there because there's no comments on the podcast but other than that uh thank you lisa for coming on i was super thank fun. you and we'll this do it again pleasure. and thank you guys so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time cool.